fine. How are you doing? I'm tired. You know, between everything that's happened over the last six months with the knee injury and trying to lose 15, 20 pounds and just coming here, I was always about saying goodbye to everybody. And man, I gave everybody a hug that I could find today. Say goodbye to the fans. Say goodbye to my family. Not goodbye to my family, but you know, this is they came all the way from Boise this morning to watch this race. And now I'm here to say goodbye to you guys. I think. One of the coolest things for me over the last 12 years was developing a relationship with the media, whether it was through social or making sure I always gave you guys time uh, in the mix zone or just making sure I always got back to you guys in a timely manner when you reached out. Um, you know, you guys are what allow us to have uh, some kind of name in the sport that makes companies like Brooks want to endorse us. So thank you guys for always giving us the ink. Sorry? You know, it's not that emotional because it's not over. This was my last track race, but I've been training to compete since I was 13. It's all I know. All I know is setting goals and then achieving them. So I'm done setting goals on the track, but I've got many, many more goals. I want to grow my business run gum. I think it could be as big as five hour energy, as big as Red Bull. And I got one more race in my legs. So I'm here to let you guys know the last race I'll ever run as a pro is the 2017 Honolulu Marathon, December 10th. I signed up for it because coming into this event, I said, I don't want to cross that line and know that it's over. You got to keep setting goals. You know, to rest is to rust, and I'm not planning on resting anytime soon. So I'll see you guys in Honolulu. What was this morning like? I mean, were you thinking about how it's going to be lost time? What was it like not getting ready for this race? You know, it wasn't. I actually, okay, I'm, I'm arrogant or confident enough to think that I could have gotten through that round. Um, I didn't feel good today. Uh, I don't know if it's the heat or what, but I just wasn't on. So, you know, as I prepared, I went in the same mindset that I'm going to get through this. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until I actually got 200, 300 meters in that I'm like, all right, just enjoy the moment, just go for a ride. I don't even know what time I ran, but yeah, not great running, but you know what? I left everything I have on that track. I'm five years older than the next oldest guy. I feel like I did, you know, I did myself justice. All you can do is play the cards that you're dealt. I'm a short, stocky kid from Boise, Idaho that went to a D3 school and ended up being ranked number two in the world, finishing fifth in the Olympics. I think I played my hand about as well as like one can. You know, as you get older, you just can't do what you used to do. And so, you know, I'm always telling people, go look at my 2012 training diary. I published that on rungum.com. You can download it for free. And if I look at those workouts, I just shake my head. I'm like, how the heck did I ever do some of those workouts? I can't do that anymore. And that's okay. I don't have to be able to do that anymore. At 33, there's a reason there's not a lot of 33-year-old half-milers out here, right? It's just... You get older, you can't do the same stuff, but at 33, there is a lot of cool stuff that I can still do, one of which will be running my first marathon. And if anybody here wants to run with me, we're giving an all-expense-paid trip to one lucky winner to come run in Honolulu with me. Airfare, hotel, entry fee, all inclusive. It's free to sign up. Just go to rungum.com and you can sign up, and we're going to pick one lucky winner to come out and run with us. When you look back at the totality victory, what's the highlight? Is that one that stands out? Making the 08 Olympic team. Now... For a lot of reasons. I, I would say, obviously, in this sport, there are two camps of people. You're Olympians and then everybody else. And I don't think that's right. I know a lot of people who are way more talented, way more determined than I am that made that never made Olympic teams. Um, but that set things apart. And I think the reason that it's most important to me is because it proved that I could get out of my own damn way. You know, most people, many people, don't make teams because they can't get through the mental part of it. And I came this close to imploding in the 08 trials, but thanks to some help and some wise words of wisdom from Sam LaPre and Gagliano, um, Kelly Sullivan, you know, they helped me get through that that uh, really stressful time in my life and then ultimately run as fast as I ever had on that day. Oh, two weeks out, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep a single wink. I just would think about the race and it sent my heart racing. And I called up Kelly Sullivan, I said, man, if I don't sleep at all for the next two weeks, there's no way I'm going to make this team. And he said, Nick, the cream always rises to the top. You're very definitely part of the cream. Just stop thinking about it and let your legs do what you've trained them to do. And I slept like a baby after that. I don't know why it resonated with me so well, but I really slept well after you told me that. Yeah, a guy like Frazier has got top of the town. He got third in his lead today. Like, yeah. He didn't make it out of the first round last year. Well, and that's what I said. You know, I said it was going to be harder for me to make the U.S. championships than get out of the rounds. Now, both proved to be pretty hard. I had to get in on rule eight and I didn't make it out of the first round, but you just never know in championship running. Hey, How you doing? Career, man. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. Second oldest guy right here. <laughs> he said, where are all the 29 through 32 year olds go? I don't know. Somehow I 
I got out here as the old. It's the senior circle. I, I, I should be out on a golf course sipping a Mai Tai or something. I, this was awesome, and I, I'm really, really glad I came out here. I'm really glad I could say goodbye to the fans, but I'm going to take two weeks off now of no running, and then I'm going to start training for the, the, my first marathon. I mean, I'm really excited about that. And uh, I'm going to be vlogging every single workout that I do between July 10th and December 10th. So watch an old fat guy waddle around and try to get fit for 26.2. 13.1. Yeah, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. When did you know you were going to do the marathon? You know, I, I got up to about 179 pounds in February. And I just, the thought of trying to get back to this meet, it just seemed crazy. I know what it takes to make a team. And trying to get fit in three months when you weigh 15, 20 pounds over race weight is delusional. So I said, if, if all I'm thinking about is trying to make London, then it's going to be demoralizing. I need to pick a goal that's more realistic. So I picked a goal that's so far out into December that I knew I could get fit for it. I said, I'm going to sign up for the latest marathon I can find in 2017. It happened to be Honolulu. And I said, no matter what happens at USA's, the days that things, the going gets tough, at least I can say, it's okay because my real goal is in December. And it allowed me to wake up every morning and go through the motions. And even when I was really tired and really hurting, I just kept thinking, I just got to keep training because 26.2 is going to hurt. And I guarantee you, before the marathon, I'll set another goal. So that however that goes, um, you just keep keep waking up, keep setting goals, and keep training for something. You've been posting a lot of like history lap type stuff, throwback. Yeah. Has this year kind of been uh, really, it seems like it's been really sentimental, especially for you. Yeah, I mean, that's what the whole point of this year was. Last year was training for the games, and that's all I thought about. And this year I knew it would be a real Hail Mary to even, just to get here healthy, and a, you know, a real miracle if I made the finals. And so... I wanted to have fun with it. I couldn't put the same pressure on myself that I have in the past. It had to be more about just having fun and reliving some of the great memories that I've had with so many friends over the last 12 years. So thank you guys, it's been awesome. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you guys around soon. Come out to Honolulu with me. Flowtrack can sign up too. <laughs> so after Honolulu, you said I'll set another goal. But yeah. You're gonna wait until Honolulu and then? No, you know, I always like to stay focused on the goal at hand. And you know, two or three, out, three, two or three weeks out from Honolulu, I'll get a pretty good idea of what I want to do. And you guys have heard me talking about climbing. My future athletic career is in mountain climbing. Oh, but, uh, you know, the marathon seems like the logical next oh, step. Hey, did you make it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Woo! You're fit. So, yeah, I'll run Honolulu, and then on January 1, I'll let you know what my next plan is.